tiger on the prowl. I'ma make it go wild. I'm original, and I told you so. I'm a kid in the candy store with the leather on the denim. I ain't the cure, I'm the venom. If you wanna find me, find the taillights. Something's coming in, you're gonna wanna take a red eye. It's time to go. It's time to go. Get ready. Get ready. Kaylee Dunn, FH Empires, you are the third team. This is What Up Wednesday, and oh my goodness, it's here. Wait. I don't have to make up my own sound effects. I can play some. It's here. Today, we are going to talk about the 2022 rules of hockey. That's right. Did you know there were any? <laughs> Surprise! We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about trapping an indoor because there was a video on the Instagrams that I saw many, many times in my DMs. Thank you all for sending it along to me. And we are also going to talk a, through a red card in an indoor game. And we're going to try to take a little bit of a different approach to it. So stay tuned for all of that. I cannot wait. If you are new to the community, to the FH Empire's third team, FHE3T, please let us know in the comments because there's a whole bunch of really, really cool people that I'm kind of big fans of. Shh, don't tell them. And they would like to say hi and make you feel welcome. And I think, I think I turned on a setting on this live stream that you have to subscribe in order to comment. And, and then I was like, ooh, ooh, I should change that. And then it was too late. I was already live. So sorry, if you're trying to comment on the live stream and you can't, then I guess you're just going to have to do this thing right here, right here. Okay. Because I don't know. Sometimes you mess around with settings and you think, oh, that seems like a really good idea. That'll really get rid of the trolls. But I didn't want to cut, like, cut down on the interaction with lots of new folk that who could, who Ooh, girl's excited today. She can't speak. It could cut down on the engagement with some new people to the community. So, hey, if you're if you're gonna try this out, you're not quite ready. You're like Keely. I'm, I'm not sure if we're gonna be best friends yet. Subscribe today so you can do this, and then as soon as the, the stream's over, if you decided, you know, you're not ready, then unsubscribe. That's a solution. Look, I'm here to make things easier. So before we get into who all's here and all that kind of stuff, I just want to breeze through a few little announcements. First up, we have scheduled, I always point the wrong way, ooh, ooh, the control elevator workshop. So our February workshop in the FHU 3T is going to be the control elevator, which I always call a control ladder as well. That might be a term that you've often applied to player management. But guess what, friends? 
there's a little bit of a different slant and that's what I like to bring to these concepts, a different slant. This is gonna be held on February 10th, boop, boop, at uh, seven o'clock for all of you small island British folk, the wee island, six of you fit in Alberta, just saying. Everybody in England, uh, that should be 8 p.m. if you're in Central European time and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So go sign up at fhempires.com forward slash control. This has been a big request from a bunch of people. So I'm glad to be able to bring this back and offer this. I hope you'll join. Okay. Um, flowers. Love to give out flowers to the community before we get going in these streams because we all want to know awesome things, especially these days, right? So big congratulations here. Wait, everyone. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to be able to get back. For Mike Mack, made his level two. Congratulations. Uh, I, you've been doing lots of work, and I'm really happy to have you in the community. You're pretty new for us, but you have been doing this for just, you know, not a couple days. So... Well done, you. And we're working towards bigger and better things, not just with you, but with everybody. So there you go. Um, just a little thing that happened the other day. I'm just going to wait for the confetti to fall. And we're done. OK, well, the cheering's over. The confetti's still falling. Yeah, 1K subscribers uh, was nice. It's nice to get there. Uh, it means that we can do different things with community tabs and that sort of thing to get you aware of what's happening with the channel itself. But friends, let's face it, the best way for you always to get the latest news of everything that's happening, whoops, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons because I'm so nervous today. It's a big day when there's new rules. And now I'm talking like Jim Gaff again. Wait, no, I think I just, huh. Something's broken. No, it's not, there we go. Um, <laughs> wait. Squirrel. Right, what was I saying? Yes, we can do things with community tabs so the best way for you to find out all the information, everything that's going on with the third team is to come to the Discord. Did you know we had, we, did you know we have a Discord? I am going to have a lot of editing to do after this is over. If you don't want to know what a Discord is, that's okay. A year ago, I didn't know what a Discord was either. But it is awesome. I think we're up to 420 members now. Well over that, I guess. Something like that. And this is where we are having our discussions because we can make things more constructive, more enjoyable, more informative. I'm all over the place. I am I am there all the time in the shop. So if you want to come and be able to have some more conversations, not just with me, but with the entire FH Empires community, please do pop in to the Discord. As an added bonus, I've put the upload link to the 2022 rules in there, in the resources channel. So that's the way I'm gonna entice y'all to go over if you haven't been there yet. Okay, I wanna see who's all here because Oh, you're all my favorites. Just gotta say. Let's go. In. <laughs> I can see I can see the bants already. I can see the bants already. Just listening, Nils. You got a big exam coming up. Okay, we will ping you in Discord if it's urgent, but good luck with your studies, okay? I'm glad that you're focusing. Just just turn. You can watch this on replay, okay? I'm I'm just glad you're here. Cabernet Sauvignon is ready for the Rachel Davids. So glad you're there. Yes, we have super chat donations. Yep. Very true. You can't, you can't slip anything by Niels. He might only be listening, but he's got all this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go get myself a widget for this, but I kind of had bigger things to plan for this show. Just saying. There you go. Third team, better get the tea on. Absolutely. I've got my tea. It's really hot though, so I should probably leave this cap open, so... I can manage everything. Mr. Dunmore is here. Good to have you. Lou, good to see you before you're going. To, ah, what tournament in Florida? Let me know, Lou. I'm interested in what's happening there. Ah, 
hot minute. Inga, thank you for popping in. Good to see you. I had to trot out the new rule book to get you back, but hey, not mad. Good to see you. What have you got for us, Simon? Um, you had two soaked matches last Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. Oh boy, you are just nailing it and your assessment. Hey, let's chat in, um, in the discords about how you're feeling and if there's anything we can do to help support you as you get ready for that. Shane's here, of course you are. Shane, I had a little chat with our mutual friend who might be an umpire manager down there. He's now in the discord. I'm so excited. Yes, very busy. <laughs> uh, isn't that what we all want to do to GMS? I don't live there and I'm zero affected, but man, do I feel your pain every time you say those three little letters. That is crazy. Chris Pelmore is here. Excellent. And the aforementioned celebratory Mike Mack. Urian's here, of course. Great there. Surely no problems with GMS. Good to know about your rehabilitation, Goddard's. I'm really, really pleased for you. I know it's so nerve wracking when you go into a big operation like that and you're so active and, you know, just being able to give you the facility to, you know, step back out there and do even more. We are grateful. Okay. I know how much you do in South Central and I know everybody down there loves everything that you're doing. So thank you very much for all of your efforts. Mr. Jordan. Hi. Good to see you again. AJ's here, of course. And Matt Septon. It's because I made a big deal out of him last time he decided to come back. This is how it works. See, look at this big smile on my face. It's so nice to see you all. Third team duties for Rachel coming up this weekend. There you go. Kia Ora, Stefan. Yes, it was a good week. It was a crazy week. So much crazy. I got locked out of my Discord server, my account. Uh, for the longest 10 hours of my life. I think, was it 10, 12, 14? It was like 15 hours. Discord, but they fixed it. So now I'm not upset. And I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I was just traumatized that suddenly I couldn't talk to you all and I didn't know what was happening. And I'm like, moderators, ah, server developer, ah, and going crazy, so. Wait. Squirrel. That's me, Tomas. Fantastic. You're hooked on indoor. Mm. How, how you like that? That's right. I am so happy to hear that. I love indoor. I absolutely do. I love indoor the way that people love outdoor. I just, I love both forms of hockey. And although I have lots of things that I criticize about both, I just think there's so much to offer there in that form of the game. And I think it's an important way to sort of, I don't know, just give you a different perspective so that when you go back to outdoor, you feel fresh and new and alive. So there you go. Mike wins here. Glad to see you. Good you could make it. Neil, for the first time in 2022 and COVID hockey is frying your brain. <laughs> yeah. And now there's new interpretations. Hey, Neil, good news. They're not that hard. And you got me. Just saying, you're fine. Mm, drop. Alan Dow's, Dow's here, sorry, Doe. <laughs> there you go. I'm speaking like you on an umpire mic. <laughs> I lead by example from the front. What can I say? It's an interesting skill, isn't it? It's something that you have to practice and, and feel comfortable with and learn what works at the time. And that was a really good question. We're gonna talk about this Hopefully next week on What Up Wednesday, we'll talk about how to communicate during the game. And the question that Luke Pibworth uh, of the Pibworth rule put to us was specifically, how do you explain decisions to players in an effective way? We're gonna do that next week as a topic, I think. Unless I get an Instagram video that everybody needs me to explain. And then we'll do that instead. I'm just kidding, we'll try to do that. Oh, and speaking of whom, it could be a fun ride. Very much so. Aline's here, good. Um, is that the... 
You know, I really liked you about three minutes ago and now I'm not so sure. Caroline, good to see you. I, and if it's not Caroline, but Carolyn, I apologize. I know people who pronounce it both ways. So I just decided to say Carolyn. It was, it was a wild guess. Wild, wild guess. There you go, congratulations. Hey, we have another one. <laughs> ha, how you like that? Hi, AJ. We have two AJs now, so I'm gonna have to do my best. I might revert to calling AJ Alex and then AJ. I am not even gonna try that. Look, I'll do it in the privacy of my own non-miked environment, but I'm not doing it right now. Your last name looks dope. Come into the Discord if you're not already there. I don't think you're already there. Come to the Discord and put a, drop a little audio recording of you saying your name for me please yeah squirrel that's me oh there you go stains here fantastic mike um oops everything is broken why is everything broken rich i'm concerned don't say that don't say that don't get stuck in the elevator is it worse than falling off the ladder mm. I think the metaphor might be going a little too far. <laughs> Bob, I am going to pin this question because it's fantastic. And we will, we will explore this very intricate and somehow complicated topic after we go through what's really there. <gasps> hey, look, do you see that? How did that happen? I didn't do that. Oh my goodness. I asked Michael Gove. I don't know. Anyway. Yes, we'll go over this. Okay. Um, let's see. Very big congratulations. And I'll just take care of that dude. There you go. Chris Maloney's here. Fantastic. Good to see ya. Mm, drop. Oh, Inga, that's so sweet. Thank you. I know it's it's hard. You want to be here in person, but don't forget. Well, if you're watching this on the replay, you already know there's a replay, but there are replays and they're up the whole time. So feel free to come back and, and we try to chapterize them to make them easy to, to go around and find the sections that you're particularly interested in. Or if you were on the live and you said, oh, I really need to catch that bit that Keely was talking about such and such, and she was ranting about this thing. <laughs> Rant of the week, press the button. And we try to make that easy for you. So I hope that's helpful for those of you who are there. You're going to the National Field Hockey Coaches Association Winter Escape Recruiting Showcase. That just flows off the tongue. I hope it's good. I hope it's a good experience. Ah, South African Ladies Assistant Indoor Coach. Well, very warm welcome. Love to have coaches. Did you know that I'm also a coach now too? So we can talk about things like that. And yes, there are, you got, you have some fantastic people over there. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with you in the discords when you come in. We'll DM about all, all the mutual friends. Gossip, you know, drop some tea. Correct choice. Graham Hook Cook is here. Oh boy. Thank you very much. That is very good. Um, let's see. That's three AJs. Yeah, we haven't seen AJ Small in a hot minute. So could somebody like SOS him? I'm a little concerned. I know he's okay. He just hasn't been here and I miss him. Greg's here. Is it too cheesy to... S what? What? It's not that it's cheesy for you to say it. It's just super offensive. I am so angry now. You're watching from the hot tub. How do you have a hot tub? Hot tub live stream. Boop, boop, boop. That could be a thing. There you go. Whoa, top of the circle. Hey there. Good to see y'all. It's been a long time. I really don't know what my live stream friends think that they can do to throw me off, but I'm just a hot mess anyway. Doesn't matter. There you go. Andrew's here. 
yes, you are taking over. And I'm not mad. I'm not bad about all that. Yeah, he pro oh, is he? Okay, out running or swimming. There you go. Great to catch up. <laughs> but it's that time. It's that time you've all been waiting for. If you didn't say hi, cool. Just know that I, I like to know who's all on board. I've been getting some DMs from people. If you're here, just don't be, don't be shy and make sure you ask your questions. And something I might ask y'all to do, if you don't mind, is ask your questions in this format today, because I really don't want to miss on anything. So Q colon, like I put in the comments, Q colon, I'm going to be doing a search in my comments for that very string so that it makes it really easy for me to find everything. Okay. There it is. Cause I don't want to miss a thing. And I also want to get through a whole bunch of the material sort of all at once so that we can, I can do my best at giving you a cohesive story. It's not just a rule book. It's a tale as old as time. It's the most wonderful time of the year where the clauses are changing and coaches ain't caring and players beware. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm really excited. Okay. Let's get to it. If, if I get a copyright strike, oh my gosh. Right. This is what it is, friends. Effective from January 2022. And as we are going to see later on, January 1st, 2022, the mysterious, the surprise appearance of the 2022 rulebook. If you are already a member of the Discord, you can go into the resources channel and grab the link or you can download it. Um, I have put it as a download on my website because the FIH has not put it up yet. We'll talk about that in a hot minute. And let's see, <laughs> I don't know what's happening with the McDern effect. I might just, just take a quick gander at my, and make sure small problem, small prog problem. Oh. Okay, just making sure that I'm, <laughs> my Discord channel is still up so that people can send me messages if I've messed anything up. Wanted to know, there you go. So here we are, January, 2022, new rules of hockey. Go to the Discord in the resources channel. When the FIH has posted the links and everything on the socials, I spoke to a friend over there and they're working on it uh, soon. And Chris Maloney, you specifically asked me whether the rules app was going to be updated soon. And that's going to come soon. Things are very scrambly. And I give my friends over there a lot of grief as a collective on a regular basis. I do have some friends there. And it's hard because I want to support them. They are vastly, vastly under staffed is the correct word. And they're trying to do all these things on their own with <laughs> not enough people. You know, you can, you can criticize some organizations for being very top heavy in administration. That, that ain't the FAH. That's the one thing they got right. They're not paying a lot of people to do work for them. It's not like they have a lot of, uh, padding and such just doesn't exist so it's coming that's all i can say once the fih has put it up on their pages i will take down my link because it's always best to download from the source okay but for now pop into the discord grab them there so what are the changes keely you're asking here we are this is basically it and if these two items look eerily familiar, you may remember that time of Van Camp when the 2021-2022 outdoor briefing was released. And these were the two points that changed in the briefing. Well, guess what? They've 
changed in the rule book as well, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to think about that in the background. I'm going to load that back into the CPU back here and talk about these things more specifically. So the face mask rule under 4.2, which was such a massive problem at the Tokyo Olympics that led to a lot of inconsistencies and umpires really being put under undue pressure, players being put on, under undue pressure. Um, that's been alleviated and I think is a very, very positive change. And we're going to talk about aerial interceptions under 9.10, otherwise known as 9.10. And yes, there are asterisks there because interceptions within playing the, or sorry, within the five meter distance will be permitted. And that is more than what the briefing said. Well, let's get into it. I want to give a big thanks to Mike Mack. Mike McDowell, he sent me a link to this uh, website called Draftable and loaded up the two versions of the rule book side by side. You, Mike, I got to send you a really nice bottle of wine because you have no idea how much time this saved me. Just huge amounts because I have done this manually in past years because you can't really trust it, right? So you can't trust the black lining, all that kind of thing. So let's have a little scroll through. What you can see is it highlights in pink on the old, the 2019 version, what is different. And then it's in blue on the other side. And we're seeing some changes in the dates. The table of contents have been altered a little bit. And once we start moving through into the introduction, and again, we've got a highlight in a date and then the preamble that introduces what the rule changes are obviously has been completely rehauled uh, rehauled redone overhauled as one word so this is a nice place to get a pretty good summary of everything that's the important points that are there so we're going to go straight to the actual rules without going to that uh, through this particularly, but this is a good place to start in the rules there. Okay. Um, you can see some of the changes in the rules committee have also been highlighted there. So good to see there. Um, and this is cool. Carla, Carla Rebecca. She is now the athlete representative on the rules committee. You may not know that there were athlete representatives, but there are Scott Tupper, of course, Canadian captain, he retired from international duties. So makes sense that he would likely retire. So they're getting input from top players who are in the mix of the game, but at that level, maybe not the grassroots players. And maybe that's something they could consider in the future. The terminology. Okay. There's a lot of pink and a lot of blue because they alphabetized all the defined terms. Yay, good to see. Only one term has changed and because it's no longer around and it is, let's see if this is gonna work. Of course it's not gonna work. Curses, the field player with gold keeping privileges. The FPWGKP, you know, I always just said, PWGKP. I didn't even say the field player because a player with goalkeeping privileges who isn't a field player is a goalkeeper. <laughs> They're kind of exclusionary terms. But anyway, that whole section, that whole term has been removed because the mandatory exper experiment as it was in 2019 has been completely absorbed into the rules. No longer an experiment. Everybody seems to be reasonably happy as much as anybody is with the rules of hockey about that change. So there you go. Um, Sideline, shot at goal, all those important things are still there and no changes. Okay. I'm just going to scroll through because this is just the coolest thing I have ever seen. Okay. 
2.2, the language that it's a mandatory experiment, that you can't play with a player with goalkeeping privileges. And you notice it doesn't say field player with goalkeeping privileges. It says player with goalkeeping privileges. Consistency. The one thing you learn in legal drafting is if you use, if you define a term in the body of your legislative piece, you use that term exactly as it appears elsewhere in the legislation so everybody knows that is the actual term. Somebody could say, well, that isn't a field player with goalkeeping privileges. It's a player with goalkeeping privileges, therefore not the same thing. I know it's pedantic, but these consistencies really do help with the readability and the comprehension of a rule-oriented legal document. So anyway, there you go. Small change in the wording in 2.3. Subtle, but I think makes it a little bit more clear that it's a retaken penalty corner that prevents if the if the penalty corner is retaken, you cannot uh, do you cannot conduct a substitution unless it is a injured or suspended defending goalkeeper. Okay, so retaken being that the penalty corner is not complete another penalty corner has been called during the course of that corner. So there you are. So it changed from being that subsequent until that subsequent penalty corner to until the retaken penalty corner. Subsequent was a little ambiguous for a lot of people. So I'm glad that's a good one. Little changing in subclause G here, time stop for substitution of goalkeepers has now been changed for time is stopped for any substitution involving wait involving goalkeepers but not for other substitutions so the reason for this would be to make it more clear that it's not that time has to be stopped only when two goalkeepers are substituting for each other but any substitution in which a fully kitted goalkeeper is involved <laughs> sorry the the yellow huddle yesterday pointed it out it's not my fault they did it they showed it so involving full kitted goalkeepers time is still stopped so just again a little bit of clarity and as they describe it in the preamble a cosmetic change okay Let's get to where things actually do change. 4.2 face mask. Do, 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 do. The face mask rule was more restrictive under the 2019 rules. So how we should have all been interpreting it and applying it in our matches, in our areas, at home, was that the face mask would need to be removed by a defender as the penalty corner was complete, which means once that player carrying the ball has dribbled outside the five meter area. So once they get to that area, they should be taking, or that, that line, that dotted line, they should be taking off their face mask. That is how the interpretation used to read. We would, of course, there was a, an interpretive pr provision to allow us to apply common sense that, you know, one step, two steps, you know, it shouldn't matter. And the guidance was to be very proactive with the players and say, mask, 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 and try to indicate because it's a, it's a, it's a line in the sand. It's a technical rule that has the intention of enforcing safety, but you kind of, you just have to say at this point, we think the danger to other players outweighs the risk of the danger to other players outweighs the risk of the danger to the player who had been wearing the face mask. So you just kind of have to draw that line and hope it's a good one. That line has been adjusted in the 2022 rules, which now reads that the player should remove their penalty corner equipment as soon as they're able to do so after the penalty corner is completed. If no suitable opportunity to remove the equipment arises, they can continue to wear it whilst, I love that British, whilst they're playing within the 23 meter area without penalty. <laughs> As I think Mike pointed out, without penalty, that's the emphasis for us. 
All players must remove all protective equipment before they leave the 23 meter area or when instructed to by the umpire. I, I guess that is trying to give us some room here that if we think they have an opportunity to remove their mask, even though play is still inside the 23 and we say, hey, come on, get your mask off, they have to do it. I don't think this opens, this is intended to open up the door to some kind of abuse where we would dislike a player and say, you, mask off now. Why? Because I don't like you. Get it off. So I think it's just, it gives us that power to be a little more forceful with the players who are being a little reticent to take off their masks, even though they've got plenty of opportunity to do so. Okay. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. I'm going to get back to all of your questions in a little bit and make sure that we're all on the same page with this, but I wanted to blow through everything at first. Okay. This is what was in the outdoor briefing. This is not at all what happened at Tokyo, but I think we all can just look at Tokyo wistfully as a time when chaos reigned and dogs and cats were living together and everything that could have gone wrong with face masks did go wrong and it's fixed. It's a good change. It's a positive change. I think it gives players more assurances that they can time their removal in a safe way for themselves. Anything that makes it more um, reasonable for us and less technical, I think, as umpires, I'm in favor of those changes. So I really like this change in 4.2. All right. Scrolly, 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 nothing here, nothing here, except 6.4. This is really kind of fun. Taking the center pass, just a little change in the, in the language again. They added, until the ball is played, all players other than the player taking the center pass must be in the half of the field, which includes the goal they are defending. I guess the old wording wasn't very clear. It is so weird when you see this real, this rule being broached. Uh, but obviously what some teams do as a strategy is off the center pass, they throw a, hot, a deep aerial into the far corner and they're hoping that their players will be at a dead sprint and will either uh, force a turnover due to pressure, obviously not an infringing of five meters pressure, but just that, that all of a sudden, oh my God, the ball's deep in our end and here's a player bearing down on me, or they are actually the initial receiver of that aerial because they've started a dead sprint. I think a lot of teams have found that unless they cheat and they start running early, somehow physics prevents them from getting there before the defenders who are standing already in that half of the field. Weird. When I, I, I just, I just dislike that play so much. Uh, so it's clear now question mark. I think everybody knows what you need to do on the center passes quite clearly. Now we are getting into the meat. So if you, if anybody ever says, well, I really want to know what I can do on the pitch and what I can't do on the pitch as a player, you say rule nine, send them to rule nine. This is the conduct of play section. And there's not a lot of changes until we get to the aerial ball rule. So this is nine ten, and they have added the language. And that language reads, the ball may be intercepted within five meters, but outside of playing distance, provided it is done safely. Now you may remember, I need to get into my proper section here. Do, do, do. Oh, where did I put it? You may remember from the outdoor briefing, 2021-22, which you can also download in the resources channel of the Discord server, that the intercepting player had to be outside the five meter area under that language. Do I have it written down here? This is even more permissive. 
within five meters, an interception will be fine as long as it's outside playing distance and it is done safely. What does playing distance mean? Well, friends, it is a defined term in the rule book. Let's go back to it really, really quickly. Breezing back. Playing distance, the distance within which a player is capable of reaching the ball to play it. Sounds fair. So what I think is important to keep in mind, and I've talked about this concept a lot when we discuss aerials, is that we tend to want to look at a five meter area around initial receiver as a flat disc on the ground. That is not what playable distance refers to. I think it, it I, I like that wording because I think it starts to really connote that where is a player playing that ball that is coming to them falling out of the sky it is coming on a trajectory and they can then reach in particular directions but if I reached behind me is that playable distance the ball is like it's not playable from there it's only playable as it's coming from in front of me so I like that and frankly, I like anything that means we're blowing our whistle less often in aerials, to be completely honest. Let's see, is that gonna get me right there? No. Let's try this. There we go. So there you go. What I'm interested in about this particular one, friends, is that the language between the briefing and the rule book is now different. The briefing says outside five meters, the interception is okay. The rule book explicitly says the ball may be intercepted within five meters. Obviously, I think we can give paramountcy to the rule book in this case, but why did they make that change? Are they gonna update the briefing? And how many people are going to get confused about this? Answers on a postcard in the comments. Okay. So back to the red line. That is all of it. As we scroll through the rest of the rule book, we're just seeing numbers that are highlighted. Nothing in the penalties section of this is rule uh, what, how the penalties awarded or rule 13, which is how the penalties are to be taken. No changes to penalty corners, no changes to the self pass rule, no changes to the free hit within the 25 meter rule. Nada, nothing. That's it guys. Welcome to the new 2022 rules of hockey. So face masks absolutely have to come off. If the play leaves the 23 meter area until then, it's when the defenders have a suitable opportunity or when the umpires encourage them to have that, to take that suitable opportunity and interceptions of aerials within the five meter distance. That's basically it. Okay. Allow me to dive into the comments and maybe the questions if anybody actually staged a question. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my little search here and I'm gonna put Q colon, example question, Chris. Thank you, Chris Pelmore. Follow the instructions. The new 4.2 says equipment, not mask. Your PC defense, right hand glove, technically I could wear throughout the game. Anyway, is this included in the PC equipment removal? Excellent question. Okay, let's, oops. Let's get back into the red line just so I can get an easy handle on that situation. So I looked at this because I've been having some discussions with some top people about what the equipment rules mean. Oh, and it's not 4.2, it's 2.2. That's okay, Chris. You're still my favorite. You're fine. Oh wait, where the heck am I? Where the heck am I? Here we go. Okay, so there's been a lot of discussion 
as to whether gloves are permitted throughout the entire game, what kind of gloves are permitted throughout the game, are knee pads and knee guards permitted throughout the game? And the more that I've studied 4.2, the more I've realized the following thusly. I would like to hear your arguments if you think I have, if I'm on drugs about this one, okay? The provision here about hand protection Every piece of hand protection, like as Chris refers to um, the right hand glove, if you're playing under the rules of hockey, whether you're using a smaller glove or you're using a bigger mitt, those would have to fit within the box at any point. But I believe that the wording permits you to wear those big mitts for as long as you want. You can wear them for the entire game if you want. The reason for this makes a lot of sense because those big gloves don't present any danger to anybody else. They may confer a slight advantage on you, but I think we can all agree as players, if any of you have picked up a stick, you do not want to be playing the entire game with a big ice hockey glove on. It's just, I find it hard enough to play with a, a more substantial, like if it's not just one of those nice um, sort of shell style, if it's got the big thick foaming, foamy pieces, those gloves, I can't even, I mean, I can't stick handle at the best of times, but I certainly can't with those big, big mitts on. I like open palm gloves. Uh, I'm a huge fan of those because I want that contact with my chamois that's on my stick. And yeah, so I, I say, Mr. Pelmore, in answer to your question here, go nuts. You do not have to discard your, um, you do not have to discard those. Okay. Um, when it comes to the knee equipment, okay. The provision here says you're permitted to wear any form of protection, including leg, knee pads, uh, leg protection, or knee pads when defending a penalty corner underneath normal playing clothing. So the extra when defending a penalty corner, I think refers directly to knee pads, not to leg protection, which I don't know what other leg protection I guess they're talking about shin guards. Why not call them shin guards or shin pads or whatever term they want to use. But the, the leg protection, I think, is, is the shin guards. I would infer that. And then knee pads are part of protective equipment that are only permitted to be used during penalty corners. Okay. So Chris is absolutely right. The language says players should remove their penalty corner equipment. They don't, it, it, and, and you could argue that that expands it, but penalty corner equipment, when you read in, in conjunction with the other provisions as I just talked about, God, I'm sounding very legal today. When you read it with the other stuff, penalty corner equipment is the knee, knee pads or knee guards and the face mask. It's excluded from covering the gloves because the gloves can be worn all throughout the match. Does that answer the question? And did that sound good? Chris, if the mask is left on outside the 23, do we have to card for the intentional foul? No. And I'm going to say this because we didn't do that before. If a player dribbled outside the five meter dotted line and we were telling them mask off, mask off, we didn't card them before, not under the rules and the general guidance that applied anywhere else. We are not here to apply a tournament specific regulation. And as much as, and, and, okay, how do I phrase this properly? It's important to be consistent. It's important to follow the leads of the top tournaments, but that handling of the face masks 
was a tournament specific regulation introduced three days before the tournament started, applied only during that tournament, was only circulated to the teams and the officiating team at the playing teams and the officiating team at that tournament. They were not posted on the website. They're not included in the general regulations. We are not carding or applying personal personal penalties or team penalty upgrades for offenses that happened outside of that. Okay? No. End of story. And if you disagree with me, fight me. I mean anybody, Chris. I know you don't disagree with me. You you just you really want clarity and I I get that very much so. Okay, let me catch up with all the non-Q colon things that were said now. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Andrew's going to catch up on the replay. Good to know. Um, here we are. Example question. Do to do, do. You didn't. <laughs> oh, that was when I was singing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. Thanks again, Mike. Like, oh, so fantastic. I will never forget this website. Draftable.com. Here, I'm going to put it in the draftable.com. I hope I spelled it correctly. There you go. Okay, let's see where it's going. Pedantic is good, says my chief pedant. Absolutely right, Simon. Why I try to read the comments without my glasses is a mystery. Wrapped in enigma, encased in a riddle. Yes, I'm happy with that too. I don't know about how that translates, you know, back and forth from Dutch and that sort of thing, Yurian, but I can only imagine that when we use more simplified English words for important concepts like that, it actually helps. <laughs> yeah, you're the one who found the typo. Exactly. Stefan, so a field player injured in a situation with a goalkeeper means a time stop. Oh, substitution. A field player. No. Yeah, Stefan, this is, this is not about injuries. This is about substitutions. If a fully kitted goalkeeper is either going on or off the pitch, and it doesn't matter who is replacing them or being replaced or who they are replacing, time must stop for that substitution. That's the way it's always been. It's just that they tidied up the wording to make it a little more clear. Let me know if that answered your question, okay? Um, Inga, you've seen very skilled removals of face masks, then playing with a mask and a stick in hand, not making fools of themselves. Huh. That is interesting. The, uh, let me, okay. I'm going to go back to the, to the wording because you don't see anything specific that removal requires the face mask to be discarded, do you? All we see here is that it can be worn. Players should remove the equipment, but it doesn't say you can't carry it around with you. Fascinating, Inga. I love that observation. That is really, really good. Okay, we're going to get to the... Despite the English hockey guidance, you've been telling defenders to make sure their masks are off by the 23-meter line this year. Okay. You're, it's, pro it's probably coming into this later on the comments, but let's sort this out, okay? Every national association has the ability to make a decision as to when the rules of hockey that are released in a particular calendar year get implemented in their local competitions. So technically speaking, England hockey is very much within their, you know, wherewithal within their jurisdiction to say, we're in the middle of a season, so we're not going to implement this change until after the season is over. Okay. In November, they issued a statement saying that they were going to disregard the briefing which didn't, you know, in my opinion, really change the rules very much, but they were not going to implement the briefing because they felt it was a substantive change 
to the rules of hockey. Now those substantive changes to the rules of hockey are actually embedded in the rules of hockey. And it's likely that England Hockey, once they put this out on their website, are going to say, this isn't going to apply until whenever. Okay. I can understand that from some points of view, but let's face it. This ain't a big deal. When you go from a more strict to a more permissive application of a particular rule, that should make it easier. It's a relaxation in both cases in 4.2 and 9.10. Those are both relaxations. And the only problem comes in with a bunch of people who says to the umpire, you're not enforcing the rule properly because that person should be penalized with a free hit for playing with a face mask on as they're dribbling the ball outside the five meter line because the penalty corner is over. Former interpretation. Okay, that's where the problem comes in. With the aerial, it is aerial interceptions that are good and controlled, like this one that I'm gonna show. This is this is the whole reason that this rule came into the rule book. Okay, was was this play here? I've shown it a number of times on streams. So this was the tying goal that Australia needed to score in order to get into a shootout at the semifinal of the World Cup, and that is Dan Barstow. That is a very safe interception, potentially within five meters. I always thought it was outside five meters. Once you saw the vertical angle that I just showed you there, this looks like it's too close, but when you see it vertically, it does look like it's five meters away, but now, very explicitly under the new 9.10. That could be within five meters, but it's outside of playing distance because as you watch right here, the Dutch player actually backs away and takes himself out of the playing distance because he thinks he's going to take it and move around. He's shaping to do something with that ball and, and, and move, probably move the ball to the, to the left-hand side of the field not realizing that that interception was possible. So this is a fantastic example of that in action. And, but it, it's rare. When I watched the entire Tokyo Olympics, I, I didn't see one instance where it occurred and it wasn't unsafe and needed to be penalized. Every attempted interception didn't come off because that magical set of circumstances is, is hard to find. You need a trajectory of a ball that's fairly low, but still moving at enough pace that it actually is, is traveling through the air. You need skillful players. You need players who are attempting to do certain things at the time that maybe they wouldn't expect so instead of moving towards the ball, they're, they're pulling themselves away and into a different space, all that kind of stuff. This isn't a big deal. This really isn't a big deal. And in an organization with the funds and the staff and the structure that many national associations have, but particularly England hockey, why can't this be circulated? It's really not hard. Common sense, Inga, absolutely. Um, Carolyn, you would have liked to have seen some indication of safety. If this is with the, if this is with uh, 4.2, then um, let me know, let me know more about what you're thinking there, what you're not happy with. Because there is the, the, the sentence here that the primary objective of wearing a fast face mask to defend a penalty corner is safety wearing consistent with the underlying spirit of this guidance should be allowed. So that, I think that gets a lot of the safety stuff. And then if we're talking about 910, okay. Um, 
provided that that interception is done safely, I think brings that safe aspect nicely in, right? So let me let me know what, what you're concerned about. Oh boy, that's tough. Oh, that the removal should be safe, says Carolyn. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess part of it is that maybe they don't want to get into that area just yet. It's, it's an interesting thing where, and I prefer this approach, where we wait for certain conventions to sort of appear. We let the players tell us what's safe and what's not safe by showing us different ways to do things. Just like Inga was saying with the face mask, continuing to be able to play with the face mask, you know, held as you're on the stick and be able to do stuff. Well, it's creative, it's inventive. Is it consistent with the underlying spirit of the rules? Yes, I think so. So I absolutely love that you, th th that is allowed to be there instead of thinking, in, instead of specifying that the removal of the face mask must also include a discarding, that it has to be off the pitch and it has to be this and has to be that. Consequences for not properly discarding your face mask are outlined in two different sections of the rules. And I think that's the right way to do it because we don't, we don't want to be in the business of enforcing whether a face mask is still touching the line or not. And it doesn't make a difference or not. Like we don't want more things to enforce for stupid reasons, for things that don't change the game, okay? But I think safety in general, you're not allowed to throw equipment, you know, onto the pitch in an unsafe manner anyway. I think umpires can deal with this. And I think they should feel empowered to deal with this, that if a player does something with their equipment that is unsafe, how do we deal with other unsafe play? Personal penalties. If the message needs to get through in that manner. So, there you go. Uh, no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go with that. Clearly not the intention, of course. Yes, because it's, it's penalty corner equipment. Not just any equipment. Penalty corner equipment. It's when you say it's interesting that the terms that they use change, <laughs> it's annoying and it's incorrect. And this, these kind of pedantic sounding errors really do make a difference. And this is why we have to have a discussion about something stupid. If they had just said face mask, <laughs> face mask and knee guards. Or if they had a defined term saying penalty corner protective equipment. And in the definitions, penalty corner protective equipment includes face masks, knee guards, anything that is not expressly permitted to be worn by players throughout the remainder of the match elsewhere in the rules. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, I just fixed it. <laughs> ha, how you like that? So you guys are talking about the shin guards being the like protection. Greg, there was a fantastic piece of equipment that we saw the American team using when they were playing at Lee Valley most recently. So their last pro league matches that they played there, the runner strapped on a thigh guard. It wasn't a knee guard. It was a thigh guard. And it was like, what? And then she wore it after the penalty corner was over for some time. So somebody on the slide was like, Keely, can they do it? And I'm, no, <laughs> they, they can't. But the problem is, and this is what happens when you define terms and you define certain things and you call something a, a knee guard. Well, that's not a knee guard. So is that a permitted piece of equipment? First of all, no, it's not. It shouldn't have been allowed to be worn regardless of safety. 
somehow players have been getting by with just getting hematomas on their thighs and being just fine. Breaking your knees is a totally different issue. But this is what happens when you get too specific with certain terms. And that's why you put in little phrases like, and anything else not otherwise prohibited in these rules or anything else not anything else permitted in these rules as field you know there's there's the two different ways to attack that clause but that's that's what you would add that's what you should add because it covers your bacon and then when you get to future things and say you want to change the policy and you want players to be able to wear leg upper thigh protection then you change the rules to allow that or you change the regulations which is a better place for that stuff Correct. Okay. Answered. Thank you. Yeah. That is fascinating. Yes. I am aware. And I, I get it. I just... It seems like it's an unnecessary barrier. It seems petulant, to be totally honest. And what it does is it puts your top players in domestic leagues who are playing on the international scene in this really difficult position where they don't know what sets of rules are gonna be applied depending on the day. It's hard enough for them, okay? I have this compassion now for players and coaches is that if you got one set of rules, I can expect you to know them, but it's, it's really hard for players to go off and play pro league one weekend and then to come back and play in their domestic competition and then the rules are different in that league. It's not right. It's not right. And that is why I think they could readdress this. Simon Webb is here. Yeah. Good to see you, friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've done that occasionally, you know, here in Canada as well. And our seasons across Canada play on different schedules as well because Calgary doesn't play the same time that Vancouver does and... Toronto does and all that kind of stuff. So I, I get that, but at the same time, there've been times where we've here in Alberta, we've just pivoted in the middle of the season. We're like, Oh no, we really like this rule. We're just going to do it. And maybe that's because we're small, but I still have to get the word out to a whole bunch of people and pursue that educational piece. But I'm willing to do that if it's going to make the game better. Urian, if a defender had ample time to remove their mask but didn't and then makes a defensive action on a ball-carrying attacker within the 23 but outside the circle, it is a penalty corner free. Okay, hang on. Uh, definitely wouldn't be a penalty corner. Okay, first of all, because we're not going to throw in uh, intentional penalties on what is such a technical rule. Okay. And I know the player is well in control of what they're doing. They're not intending to commit the foul, but they're intending to commit the action that causes the foul. But, but, what is being broken down? What, wh where is the opposite team being disadvantaged? They're not. This is a technical rule. Only there for that purpose of safety. And it's a precautionary safety rule. So, no. So, would I call a free hit for that if they had ample time? No. Because of the following. Should. Oop. Here, let me show you what I'm looking at. The word, the word should. Players should remove their equipment as soon as they're able to do so. They can continue to wear it whilst they're with, but all players must remove all protective equipment outside the 23. So the difference between the word should and can, and then must, to me, mean that I'm not calling a foul. But I am, as an umpire, going to encourage the players to take the stuff off. 
And let's face it, in the context of the game, how many players are saying, boy, I want to keep this face mask on for as long as humanly possible. I've got a chance to take it off, but boy, I'd much rather try to make a bunch of receptions and a tackle and then throw an aerial down the pitch all while wearing a face mask. No. Common sense, right? Apply common sense to what is going to happen in front of you instead of what could what permutation could possibly happen. And I think you'll get closer to the right result. <laughs> Very true. There you go. <gasps> Meg! <laughs> Safety always applies. You don't like it when the rules say something like provided X can be done safely. That's true. There's, there's both sides of that argument. You know, you heard Caroline earlier saying, I wish that there was more mention of things being done safely, you know, and then does specifying it emphasize the point or does it indicate that if it's not specified that it doesn't have to be done safely? Cause that can be done. The legal argument. I don't like that. For mass outside the 23, would I card for repeated offenses? I sure hope not. Like, honestly, it would have to be a really blatant and just super rude. <laughs> it would have to be so rude. No. Are throat guards okay for penalty corner protection? It, it, yeah, we're not. Uh, oh boy. Goalkeepers. Goalkeeper's equipment is not part of this particular discussion here. So I don't want that to get confused. Goalkeeper's equipment are musts. Are under 4-4. What they can wear is in this paragraph. The following are permitted for use. Body, body, blah, blah, blah. Throat isn't even covered there. So frankly... Not 99 problems, and a throat guard ain't one. That's how I would say that. But Stefan, as I said, the issue you get to is that do we have to put safety or the word safely around every single clause now? Because if we don't, because it is added in some places, it's implied it. It doesn't have to be safe in other places. Safety is throughout the entire book because of section... Where is it again? Is it the preamble? Somebody will tell me in a minute. It might be in the preamble, I think. The players are responsible for each other's safety. That is nine. As soon as I say the words out loud. Ah, but it doesn't say safely. It says responsibly. So I point at my monitor like you can see me. Players are, are expected to act responsibly at all times. That's even harder than safely. But there you go. Okay, so the point being, Stefan, is that you have to be cognizant of the effect that specifying things has on the reading of the rule book as an entirety. Okay, so this isn't about being just because you say safe more often in some places doesn't mean that that puts safety as a higher priority elsewhere. It can cause a lot of other problems throughout all of this. Oh, I know, right? There you go. Yes, yes, I just, yes. Like, let's not look for reasons to blow our whistle. So we had, we had this conversation in the huddle as we were going through some, some other rules. And I, I wanted to reemphasize to the group, our overriding purpose or the, or the, the principle that should be guiding us through every decision we're making is, can I possibly not blow my whistle here? 
I am looking for reasons to not blow my whistle. I want to stay out of the player's way. And I intervene. I get in there when I have to because it will make the game safer and it will keep the game fair and it will help them play their best. If those two things are happening. Oh, thank you very much. Please do that. I can put that up. I, I don't... Maybe play, field players will start putting on other pieces of equipment. I don't know. I don't see anybody putting throat protectors on. Okay. Okay, so the guidance uh, for indoor that self-pass on a free hit with a free push with a mask on must be blown as a penalty corner when inside the circle and a free push when outside the circle. The rules of indoor are different with face masks. Okay, so let's keep that separate and maybe we'll... Urian, um, send me a message on Discord. Put in the Ask FHU and we will address it on the next one, okay? Because that is something that we could straighten out. That might be nice. Okay. Any other questions about the 2022 rules of hockey? Where do you find them? How much do you love them? Are you happy with this? Every rule cycle, I am surprised at what I see and what I don't see. Maybe because on a pretty much daily basis, I'm talking to umpires, players, and coaches throughout the world about the rules. I'm, I, I feel like I got a pretty good handle on what, you know, I've got an ear to the ground here. I, I know what people are, are wishing would change, are asking for things to change, who, things that shouldn't, should just be left alone. And I'm, I don't know if that is necessarily reflected in what I see every two years or three years in this case. So there you go. Okay. You're good. Yeah, you're okay. I think we agree. I just, I just want you to understand the consequences of specifying and the lack of specificity in other situations. Okay. And surprisingly, there's no 2.7 rule about concussions in outdoor. Yeah. See, I'm surprised. You put something in the indoor rules in December, 2020, it's been, a, it's been over a year. Didn't make it into here. Do we not have concussion risks in outdoor? As far as I know, we do. So there we are. Okay. Let's get on to a couple other things. It is late. This show is going to go a little longer than usual because, well, new rules, very important. But I wanted to go through the scenario that was sent to me on the Instagram. Ja, die about <laughs> okay, I nee. think that was really cool. Ja. Ja, I'm going to turn that down a bit. So Self Pass put this up on the Instagram. Because <laughs> they did it because it's tricky. Okay. So you can see that the defending team is not super impressed at being called for a penalty corner when they have pulled their goalkeeper, incidentally, because they are trailing in the game and they're looking for a tying goal. And the question here is basically whether this can be considered trapping. Did I say drilling? I feel like I said drilling. If this can be considered the trapping form of obstruction and because it happens inside the circle, it's a, um, it is a penalty corner. I'll come back to that one. Thank you, Chris, for finding that for, and yeah, nothing's changed about bullies and penalty corners. Everything that was there is still there. Okay. So to remind everybody of this, this is the rule 
in indoor hockey in regards to traffic obstruction. Okay. Um, it's this, it's the end section to 919 before we get to the guidance. Opponents must leave an outlet of reasonable size, not a rodent of unusual size, but an outlet of reasonable size, an OORS through which the ball may be played. If you get that reference, we're friends. So what a reasonable size is, is defined in the briefing. Okay. And I think Chris or Mike, I can't remember which one of you pointed this out very accurately on the discords. Chris, you were worried you were going to get corrected on this, but you can see the third bullet point there. Opponents must leave an outlet of reasonable size, shoulder to stick length. Okay. So it's not just necessarily a shoulder length, but a shoulder to stick length. So we're talking, you know, I don't know. I don't think my shoulders are 36 and a half inches wide, but they certainly there. Here's a, a fairly um, analogous situation from the briefing. You can see a pretty similar situation. Sorry, I just have to get to the slide so I can play the video for you. And you can see that an outlet is given at times, but it's not a shoulder length and it's certainly not a stick length. Okay, so that is that should be a penalty corner in this situation. Okay. Looks very similar from this angle. We're side on. It's really hard to see. The second angle here is what we really should be looking at because it's a lot better to show. So the two defenders as they're situated there. Good. I, I don't see any problem. There is a shoulder to stick length being allowed. It's this next defender who creeps up. He creeps up and he cuts down the amount of space that's available. You can see that his orange stick is closer to the boards than the dude who is, who was formerly closest to the boards. The player formerly known as closest to the boards has been replaced. Okay. And then he kind of moves the stick back and then he moves it up again and he moves it back. And although it's small, yes, I would say shoulder to stick length. Oh, <laughs> okay. I see what's happening here. I'll keep playing this in the background and look at the comments because you guys are asking some good questions here. That, okay. There we go. Of course you got it. <laughs> it looked like an outlet of reasonable size to you, Rachel. Doesn't seem to be trapping for you, Urian. Not even with the shoulder width guidance. I think the angle makes it difficult. And as Chris is saying, it's the third defender that steps in that causes it. The two players with the sticks perpendicular to the boards are there. It's that third guy. I would also like to note that I really hate how the fourth defender comes running at the umpire. To me, that's psh, off right away. Off you go. He travels from some distance away. That guy, he's, he's standing, he's standing in front of the goal. And when he doesn't like the decision, he comes running up. Dude. Yep. Yeah, the first two are fine. I think you're absolutely right. Question, if the defense had allowed an out, an outlet of reasonable size, an ORS. I love it. We're making this happen, friends. We have a new, a new anagram, a new acronym. And the attacker doesn't use the ORS. Is it a free push defense or is it a bully? Okay, that is a good question. Let's see if I can go to... Okay, here we go. I'm gonna have to move my head. Don't be alarmed, I'm okay. So this is talking about the situation that um, 
that was being asked about right there. Sorry. Bye. Chris. So the channel has been created. The defender doesn't use it. What is the appropriate penalty? And what the, what the defending player is hoping to get is the bully because that's awesome. It gets them out of hockey hell, gets the ball outside the circle, puts it on the three meter line. Great. Is that right or fair? The team, the defending team must allow the ball out. Says the solution out must be out without interference. If the team without the ball interferes with the outlet, a PC or free push will be awarded. But it still doesn't say what the result should be. And that's why this particular briefing slide kind of sucks. Should it be a penalty corner against? The attacking team does not have possession of the ball. You technically can't call it. Right? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good that you would call a penalty corner against a team that isn't. It's not an offense against the team who has possession or likely possession of the ball. Have I mentioned how much I really dislike the trapping obstruction rule? <laughs> and that's precisely because it is not a foul against a player in possession of the ball. It is a let's make the game pretty foul and it, it falls down it doesn't have a safety rationale behind it it's just a aesthetic thing so you can't you, you have to really struggle to get a cohesive set of principles that apply to the situation but going back to that specific trap on this replay that third defender who comes up, when, when he puts a stick down at first, he takes it away. And yes, it's momentary, but it makes a difference. And he's still cutting off more of the space. His only out, way out is through the board. And then um, that has only one result. The third defender picking up, they're forcing the turnover. Yeah, I mean, there is a, they are trying to get the turnover out of it. Absolutely. Stuart, hey friend, do the players need to be able to move it through the outlet or simply pass the ball through it? There is a pass option off the board. There's a pass option, but it's it's a small. It's small and it can't be interfered with. Or sorry, it has to be, it can't be just a small little gap. It's got to be an ORS. And there can be no interference. So somebody was asking on the Discord server, Somebody timestamp this for me about whether you can intercept and where you can try to intercept the ball as the opposing team. Staying devil's advocate, the third defender isn't within playing distance. So if the attacker would move that way, it'll depend on whether the way back is left open. Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of reaching in there. It's about the outlet. He doesn't have an outlet towards the goal. Okay. That's cut off. The only outlet is up the boards and the third defender, regardless of being a playing distance is cutting it off. It's not about whether playing distance is about playing the ball. This is not about playing distance because he's not trying to play the ball. He's trying to cut off an outlet. So move that, take that playable distance thing, chuck it out because it doesn't pertain to this rule or situation whatsoever. Does it need to be a straight outlet? Nope. It just has to be an ORS. Yeah, not to me though. Angle. Third defender does close the distance below an ORS, but was any warning given to open the space as he appears to be backing off? Being proactive is always a good thing, Crispy. You're absolutely right. I'm not sure what I, I see the umpire point there. I mean, it's, they're playing in the Bundesliga in Germany and it, that the hall is super noisy. Like you heard the first time I, I I'll play that again. <laughs> There's a lot of shouting going on. Okay. And this is late in the game. 
Und da Who knows how many times previously in this game at this level of very exceptional yeah. hockey. You can see him pointing. Yeah. The guy comes in and cuts it off. The outlet was given, the third player caused it. So, like, don't come in here, third player. That's kind of kind of getting a little tough to impose more proactivity on the umpire there. I'm I'm happy with how he he got that. No, Yurian, that's not how the rule works. The outlet of reasonable size has to be provided, and then the player passes the ball through it. Because we're avoiding the player standing there and going, I have nowhere to go. I'm just going to stand here with the ball now. So no, it's got to be blown if the outlet isn't given. Now you could take a moment and try to be proactive and get the players to do what you, you want to do at many levels of play. Not at this one. I would argue. Um, Radoslav Penev disagrees. Uh, there's plenty of space between Corp and the boards. If the attacker goes there, he may play the ball. Uh, you're not convinced. Okay. Shoulder to stick width. And Meg, as you asked earlier, does it mean the shoulder to the stick length? No, it means shoulder width, stick length. Shoulder width is the minimum. And when you look at it from the top angle, that is not enough. Okay, we can't even see the boards almost in that replay. And we're side on, we have the wrong angle. So Radoslav, I respect the verbalization of your opinion. I don't think it's the most correct decision. If the third player, Stefan, went and marked the attacker behind the ball carrier, then there would still be an outlet. Just the outlet of reasonable size space is marked. That is the interesting question that we need to deal with. And again, this is why this rule is so dumb. Because now we get into the point where, well, if you leave the outlet and you don't interfere with the ball, at what point can you interfere with the ball? We know there's only one place it would go. I would go, I would go mark that top player or I, I would at least get I would time it so I am right there on top of them as soon as the ball goes there but I would probably just mark that player and see what happens what is an umpire going to be able to to call outlet given not into the outlet is not interfered with okay channel created by opposition shoulder width defending team must must allow the ball out out must be out without interference. Okay, so. I get that it's boring. I agree. It, it Trapping obstruction is very boring. That means there's a flaw in the game that we need to figure out a different way to address under the rules than something like this, because this, this doesn't work of course of course the fact that you can't move the ball three-dimensionally creates the trap uh what did Baz to say no pc attacker needs to use the way out and also umpire needs to be proactive in noting these situations yeah no pc against the defender for not using the outlet yeah you can't me and Baz are usually on the same page on these things so Yep. Still don't like the play in the corner, can stay there with the ball. Um, why bother? Yeah, I I would be hesitant as a player to use, for example, the space across the goal. I'd be like, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but when you're being proactive as an umpire, so when I see players getting into the pushy-pushy situations or whatever, or they're just standing there, I tend to get right in there and use my voice. And just by getting on top of the situation and perhaps being a little louder than you normally would be, tends to inspire immediate reactions that turn into something else that you can call to get out of the situation. So that's the good news. Don't trap, don't stand there. I would say, no, that's not coaching. That's not coaching, okay? 
Tomas, I would say move the ball. Move the ball. Outlets here. Move the ball. Get it moving. Get it going. That's what I would say as an umpire. You are telling them that the defending team, or sorry, you, you are telling them that the, the opposing team is complying with the rules by providing an out, outlet of reasonable size. And that is where the ball is going to be moved. It's not coaching in the sense of pass the ball harder. Great work. Good job. We tell, um, we tell players what to do all the time. And they pull their goalkeeper. Yeah, that's why they were... I mean, this was a big stress moment in the game, obviously. Give an outlet, use an outlet. Yep. That's that's nice and simple, Chris. I really like that. Or as simple as let's go. There you go. Thanks for coming, Bob. Good to have you. Yep. Good to see you, Mike. How much time can we allow the attacker to not use the outlet of reasonable size? Attacker being the player in possession of the ball. We can't call anything against them because they have possession of the ball. Yes, I definitely do need that. Yep, you can't block the outlet, but you can mark, can't you? That's just good defense. No. <laughs> I, I mean, in what sense, you're in? Are you saying that it means that the outlet doesn't have to allow the player out? It doesn't matter. The reasonable size is the shoulder width to stick length. That's the outlet of reasonable size. Guidance is pretty clear there. A shot clock? Oof. Yeah, do we want basketball, though? Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. It's an interesting idea. It's something to something to talk over yeah there you go good to see you carolyn very nice to have you um okay more people like that that's very interesting hi al yeah move it move it exactly so coming from that culture al like we we see that all the time because if a if a puck gets trapped between two skaters in ice hockey i feel very foreign when i'm talking about this in this context uh, you'll hear the refs screaming, you know, move it, move it, move it, because what they don't want to do is to call a face off and, you know, move the puck out because it's just, you know, it eats up the clock, it's boring, it allows a line change when maybe they wouldn't do a line change, blah, 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 blah. So, Radoslav, the only possible way out of the trap is playing the ball on the floor if their sticks are leaving. One stick outlet, there's no dangerous play when trying to move the ball through there. Agreed. Very correct. We just differ on whether there was a stick length there, and there wasn't. Same. Is there anything you can do with the outlet of... Yeah. Um, no. No. There is nothing in the rule, there is nothing in the guidance that empowers you to penalize a player who's in possession of the ball for failing to use the outlet. Oh, wait. Okay. So... There's no dangerous play when trying to move the ball through the outlet in defense feet bodies, correct? Then this should be considered an outlet. In this case, um, yeah, we just differ on that. And that's that's fine. That's fine. Radoslav, when, when you umpire a lot, you understand the importance of angles. And what we see on that Instagram video is a representation of an angle very different from where the umpire was. The umpire had perfect view of this. Perfect. And he was at the right angle. Nothing was blocked. He knew, I'm kind of going to go with that guy rather than the crappy camera angles that we had. I think it's okay to defer to their judgment in that case. They are applying the rule correctly. Their interpretation is correct. The angles just might be deceptive. A turnover for good defense. But what are you going to award if it's inside the, if it's inside the circle? And we don't just make up fouls. 
fouls occur because the team with possession of the ball has been interfered with somehow. That is not the case in strapping, trapping obstruction. Strapping obstruction. Woo -hoo -hoo. There you go. Cheers to you too. I love getting in discussions like this. Um, and yes, very thank you to you too, Mr. Goddard. It's always good to see you and I'm glad that uh, things are going well. Um, it's a matter of angles, not interpretation. The interpretation was, we agree on what the interpretation should be. What we agree are, what we disagree upon are what the facts are. So really I kind of don't care because that thing happened, it's in the past. What I care about is everybody who watches this and everybody watches the replay and everybody who talks about it to their friends and shares it with their friends are going to agree on the interpretation so that when they see this again, they're gonna apply it correctly. That's all I want. I want us to apply this correctly. Our evaluation of what happened in this particular situation, doesn't matter. It's all gone. <laughs> the bionic goddess, I love that. Okay, as a result of going so long, 1.42, I have on my clock in Mountain Standard Time, I'm going to save the red cards, uh, red card and all the other cards from an indoor game to discuss for next week. It's a worthwhile discussion. It's gonna be really interesting. Coin toss has been deferred again. We got a few other things. If you want to have your say on what I'm going to be able to talk about the next What Up Wednesday, mm, have you heard? We have a Discord server. Come in here and you tell me what's going on. This is a great place to post the, uh, the, the social media posts that you're seeing and ask your questions. Sometimes we can have great discussions in the server. And sometimes I think, you know what, this is worth a little bit more of an in-depth exploration. Let's do this live. So that's what we're doing today. What up Wednesday? It was good to see you, Radislav. I hope I see you in the server. It'd be nice to have you join. Chris wants to see the red card. Give me the red card. Give me the red card. It's right there. Do press the like button on your way out. If you enjoyed this and you thought it was awesome, you can, of course, always, you could buy me a, a rosé. I'm just kidding. I use it for equipment. I don't use it for rosés. That comes out of my personal budget. But if you got some value today, that would be very much appreciated to help support what we're doing. But uh, hitting the subscribe button, clicking that little notify would be fantastic so that you know when all content comes out there. But really, this is the place I want to see you. I want to see you on the Discord because this means I get to know you better. I get to know what challenges you have, what's on your mind, and we have a ton of fun. Okay, so I hope you're going to come in there. Yes, and Mike, your contribution just, I, I need to give you a point in the Discord server or seven. So there we go. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap up, Kelly. What are you doing? Just popping in here at the end, random. Just back to the PC equipment and overhead reception. Yes, very good to see. Thank you very much. Thanks for popping in, Kelly. It's always nice to see you. And this has been my point. I get really frustrated when regulations or weird shit in the rules puts you guys who are on the pitch in a bad situation. You should be empowered to be able to do a great job instead of having to, you know, and the blame, I, I, I get so angry. Very protective. Okay. You're, you know, thank you. And thank you for everything that you added. And when you help like raise these things. Don't be afraid to say the things that you think I might disagree with because it does actually help me think through and reason. And it's just, it's really important for all of us. That doesn't fit with any of other rules, Stefan. I get it, but there you go. You're very welcome. There's only 24 hours in the day. Who said that? What kind of nonsense are you talking, Stain? That's not how we work. And yes, we will see you next week, Lou. Good luck with your tournament. I hope it goes really well down in Florida. Stay safe, okay? Um, yes, not always there. 
Greg, very good luck. You might turn tune in from somewhere warmer. Do tell in the discourse. All right. Have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday. If you're still on Wednesday, if you're in the future, like the New Zealanders are, there's now, I don't know, five of you on the broadcast. Happy Thursday. I hope it uh, turns out very well for you. And we will see you in the Discord server. Have an awesome one. Bye, everybody.